today we're going to learn how to replace valve cover gaskets, spark plug gaskets, and the spark plugs. So I began this journey just trying to replace spark plugs and when I got the first one out I saw it was covered in oil and that's a telltale sign of the spark plug tube gaskets failing. So I've pulled out my Vever inspection camera just to confirm what I see here. I'm going to stick it down here in the tube and check out all of that oil that is sitting there in front of the spark plug. And while I'm at it, I might as well check the cylinder condition. Everything looks pretty good there. And as we're taking it out, we can take a look at that gasket that has failed. For this job, we're going to need a ratchet, 10 and 14 millimeter sockets, a 10 millimeter wrench, three and six inch extensions, and a 14 millimeter spark plug tube. The tools that I've used can be found in the description below. And for the supplies, we're going to need a male gasket set. The part number is there on the screen some NGK spark plugs, and some ultra black RTV. Again, these links can be found in the description below. To get to the valve covers, we're gonna to have to take out the battery and the air box and intake assembly here on that side. To take out the battery, we start by undoing the two bolts on top. Both of those are 10 millimeter. and take off the battery tie down, which is two 10 millimeter bolts. You're gonna need the deep socket for these two. And with those undone and the tie down out of the way, you can lift the battery out by the handle. After the battery's out of the way, we pull the tray that it's sitting on out, and that will reveal six 14 millimeter bolts. Four of them are on top, and then two of them are on the side. To get our air cleaner out of the way, we start by undoing two of the plastic pop clips. They will screw out a little bit and then you can pry the rest of the way out. And with those two out of the way, the air duct will just lift right out of place. We then 
can undo this hose clamp right here and unplug our math air sensor. The plug may get stuck, so just pry gently on the end of it to get it off of there. The air box is held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. And with your extensions on your ratchet, you can go ahead and undo those. There's also a wire here on the side of the box that we can take out. And then the air box will just lift right out of place. Next, we need to get these plates off of the valve covers. They're held in by two 10 millimeter bolts and you can just undo those. On the driver's side, there will also be a wire connected to that plate, so you can undo that. With those out of the way, we can get our coils out of the way. Uh, they're held in with 10 millimeter bolts. The front ones will be easier to get out than the back ones. And with that done, there's a little clip on the back of the coil that you can undo. I'm prying the end off with a screwdriver here. You want to make sure and hold that clip really good so it doesn't go flying off somewhere. And now with those out of the way, we can begin on our valve cover bolts. All of these bolts are 10 millimeters and there are eight of them, three on top, two in the middle, and then three on the bottom. The three on top are going to be relatively easy to get out. And the three on the bottom are gonna be relatively easy to get out, especially if you go under the frame rail. The two middle ones, are the ones that gave me the most trouble during this process. These are the ones that are gonna be the most difficult to get to. For me, I ended up using a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench on uh, these two to get them out of the way. That was the angle I was sitting at, but you've just got to trial and error and see which 10 millimeter tool works for you. 
That's why having an indexing 3 8 wrench is really nice for this kind of job. You can get in some awkward angles that a straight wrench won't always be able to. And I've just recorded myself taking off the top three bolts, um, breaking those first two with a 10 millimeter and an extension. The extension was too long to grab that back one. So I'm ditching it and just going with the 10 millimeter straight onto the indexing ratchet. With all eight of those bolts undone, we can start getting our valve cover off. I would normally recommend using a plastic pry bar to get this off, but this engine has 150,000 miles and it was really stuck on there. So I'm prying with a flathead screwdriver right now and I'm staying on the outside of the gasket surface. You wanna make sure to stay on the outside and not pry on the gasket surface inside the gasket. and it's still pretty tough to get off even with the front half broken and that's because there's a lot of RTV in there from the factory. So you are just going to have to manhandle it and get it off of there. With it out of the way, you can see that the gasket stayed behind thanks to that RTV and we can get that off. Here's a better look at the RTV. It's here on the cam carriers, just those two lobes in the back and those two lobes in the front. We're going to want to clean that off really good and put some new RTV on the gasket before we put it back on. With that RTV cleaned off, we can start getting the old spark plugs out of here. I'm using a wobble spark plug socket that you can find in the description down below. Having that little bit of flexibility makes it really easy to get into there and get at some of the different angles that the boxer engine needs. To get the spark plugs back in, I'm using these NGK spark plugs. Start by getting it finger tight in the threads to make sure that you don't cross thread it and finish off by snugging up with your wrench. To get the valve cover gasket in place, we can put our RTV in the corners here and all down that side of the valve cover gasket. and repeat the process for the back side of it as well.
For reinstallation, begin by popping the spark plug tube seals back in. They only go in one way, and that is with the fluted end facing up. They can be a little tricky to get on, but you just got to keep fiddling with it until they finally set in place. To put the valve cover gaskets back on, there is a sequence to the bolts. It is here on the service manual page. The two middle ones go first, then you go in a zigzag pattern for the top and bottom. This is to make sure that the valve cover sits flat. There is a torque spec reference. You can also see that here on the page. This ends up being a good afternoon of a job, depending on how quickly you work through and how much trouble some of these hard to reach bolts give you. But once you get it all torqued down, it goes pretty quickly to get back together. 